Our next stop is the Alfred Wegener Institute Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research, or AVI, in Bremerhaven. AVI was established as a public foundation in 1980 and is distributed across five sites, namely Bremerhaven, Potsdam, Oldenburg, Zult, and Helgoland in Germany, with more than 1,000 employees. The central focus of AVI is to conduct research in the Arctic, the Antarctic, and at temperate latitudes, together with national and international partners, to unravel the complex processes of the Earth system. AVI also coordinates polar research efforts in Germany, providing both the necessary equipment and the essential logistical support for polar expeditions. The Institute hosts several research groups, including the Phytooptics Group, one of the leading European research groups in the field of bio-optics and aquatic remote sensing. Let's learn more about their work and their role in the scientific preparation of the NMAP hyperspectral mission. I'm in the NMAP advisory uh, board, um, the expert for the inland water and coastal water applications of NMAP. This started in 2007 when I actually uh, started my young investigator group in cooperation with the University of Bremen. Um, this group um, is focusing on research on ocean optics and ocean color remote sensing. But uh, a big focus was already to work on high spectral resolved data to obtain products like phytoplankton diversity from space. And we have been actually the first group to work on satellite data with high spectral resolution. This was atmospheric sensors, but it was a good test bed for the hyperspectral imaging we are now working on since 2017. The, the step from the multi to the hyperspectral imaging and with water applications is that we don't have only the amount of the overall components, which before was just classified into colored dissolved stuff in particles and some of the particles which are phytoplankton. This was the main categories. We can now go to the sources of actually particles which are not phytoplankton, also the dissolved organic matter, and that's quite interesting to differentiate between sources which are actually made by degrading phytoplankton in the water or actually coming from, from the, uh, like the coast when I have the terrestrial input. And by that, it's easier to classify if maybe pollution is taking place or erosion processes are taking place. On the other hand, we can also get the composition of the phytoplankton, which then helps us to upscale um, how this might uh, lead to, um, to the higher trophic levels. So far, there have been attempts also to get um, the composition of these uh, components of phytoplankton, of particles, and uh, dissolved organic matter from multispectral, but it was always limited that you basically uh, fitted a lot of data sampled in the field and tried to um, extrapolate the few bands information to obtain uh, a clear answer to, to the composition. While now we have much more spectral information which is uh, driven by the, the changes in the composition and enables us to actually retrieve um, from analyzing the data this information. We are totally uh, targeted um, to amplify the, the use of the watercolor products because we can now go to, um, to, towards the composition of these uh, products. And it's mainly on the phytoplankton, which is the base of the food web. And by knowing its composition, we can uh, revolutionize actually the, the predictions of where fishery stocks could be or how actually maybe at coastal sites, um, harmful algal blooms will uh, develop, or if we actually have a pollution uh, 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 which can be traced to be of um, terrestrial input, uh, while before we were not really sure if it actually could have been even originated within the sea. So um, it will improve a lot our predictions of how to, um, uh, yeah, how to, uh, 
operate or work or use the inland waters and, and the sea in a way it is in an environmental sustained way. On one hand, we, we have um, directly the, the users which are responsible for monitoring maybe the water quality in the inland waters, in, in the lakes, in the ri rivers. The water quality information can then be used in several aspects. So one would be also like uh, to mitigate tourism. Also an early warning system can be developed. And another one uh, using this information on the water constituents, not only water quality, would be the, the fisheries. A third one is maybe on, uh, on longer term processes to look for the changes in, in the, uh, over many years. This would then probably go more on like climate change assessment and move more into the research modeling community, which then gives finally the um, recommendations to the policy how to act and mitigate. The big challenge with hyperspectral is that well, before we had probably from eight bands um, at 300 meters the information, now we have at 30 meters uh, for over 100 bands the information. So the big data is the huge challenge. This means we need um, storage cap capacities of the data. We need uh, the capacity to actually download the data from the satellite uh, down to the ground station. Um, so th there's a, the communication challenge on, on a different scale we had before. Uh, we need also to process the data. We need high performance computing and it needs a lot of collaboration. And uh, that's also a challenge and streamlining because uh, a lot of expert knowledge has uh, to be there to work with that. And the more um, harmonized that is among the different missions and the, the data sets, um, the more experts we have actually to, to work on that. And we need that for this exploitation. It cannot be only two, three people working on this uh, data sets. We need a lot of people to work on it, to do it uh, correctly, to find what is not working, to move forward. And uh, this is the big challenge. The more information, the more <laughs> difficult to work on it. But it's also an opportunity for uh, uh, collaborations. And it's also the opportunity with uh, the capacities we have now in terms of um, computational uh, uh, performance, uh, computing and um, storage to, to work together and all these um, open source, open coding uh, efforts, they are really in line with that.